I'm Douglas Rushkoff. I'm a media theorist. Narrative collapse is the way that stories don't work without time. If you don't have time, how can you tell a story? Right? And if you look at the kinds of devices that we use now to uh, consume our media, you know, from you know TiVo and remote controls and Netflix, the storyteller no longer has control over the time span in which we consume the story. So that's really affecting storytelling techniques as well as the storytelling medium. So you've got Netflix now saying, here's House of Cards, watch it whenever you want. Watch it all at once in a binge, watch it a little bit at a time. It's great in terms of consumer choice, but what do we lose is that sort of collective narrative experience. Uh, did you see The Sopranos last night? You know, there is no Sopranos last night anymore. There's just Sopranos media. When did you consume your House of Cards episode seven? You know, so you lose that, that synchronization. But narrative collapse is, is, is bigger than that because in a world where, as I'm arguing, in a world where people no longer have time, they no longer have goals, you no longer work towards, oh, I'm gonna graduate college and then get a job. Oh, the ends justify the means. Oh, I'm gonna join this movement and then we're gonna do that. Everything's happening now, I want it now. I'm gonna occupy Wall Street, we're gonna sit here now and come to consensus, it's all presentist. In a presentist world, how do you tell stories? You know, you kind of can't. So you look at Christianity, what do they do? They gave up on the Jesus story and when they're talking to kids, what would Jesus do? You wear it on your wrist. That's presentism. What would Jesus do right now? How can you make your decisions consonant with this guy rather than this man died for your sins and this happened to him and that happened to him? The story's no longer there. Same thing happens in advertising. You can no longer tell the story, oh, the girl, she's gonna go to the prom, but she has a zit and she tries to pop it and then it gets bad, it gets worse. And by the time you tell your story, they're gone with the remote. They don't wanna know about the girl with the zit. So she's not gonna get to the Oxy-5 and get to the prom and all that. You just, you leave. So how do you communicate in a real-time way? You know, that becomes non-fiction communication. That's the kind of stuff that happens on Twitter and on Facebook and social media, where it's, how many slaves were used to make this product? Well, none were used to make ours, and 10 were used to make that one. Right now, there's five slaves working to make your iPhone. But we make these phones in this way. So it's about sort of real-time communication of non-fiction, true facts about products, about things.